I'm Jill Heinerth. Let's have a look at dive computers, conservatism, and gradient factors. Jill Heinerth, tech diver, instructor, and underwater explorer. I'm trying to clear up some misconceptions about basic dive physics and physiology. As an explorer, I need to use diving computers that help me reach places nobody has been before. Diving computers are the key technology that helps me push the bounds of human endurance. This is the third installment in a three-part series that will inform you about how your computer works and how you can plan safe explorations of your own. Personal settings are all the rage in fitness wearables and apps these days. Did you know that your diving computer offers you an opportunity to consider personal risk factors, then select a level of conservatism Computer algorithm modelers offer us a basic framework, but it's up to us to make choices about how we use our instruments. Only we can assess additional risk factors such as age, injuries, illness, diving practices, thermal considerations, activity level, sea state, and buoyancy control that can affect the safety on any given day. Although many divers never delve into their computer manual deeply enough to learn about conservatism settings, it's important to do so. Personal factors should not be overlooked, and yet few divers know how to adjust those factors in a way that positively impacts their safety. I'm going to share a simplified description of different strategies here without requiring that you have a degree in physics to understand them. So let's begin with conservatism levels. Many computers offer the opportunity for a diver to adjust personal levels to be either more or less conservative. A recreational diver who selects a more conservative level leaves the water sooner due to reduced no decompression limits. Now, a technical diver who selects a more conservative setting stays in the water longer on their decompression. Generally, these settings are represented with plus one or plus two for more conservative and minus one or minus two for less conservative. There's a neutral default level provided too. The more conservative levels of plus one or plus two can be used to account for less than ideal diving conditions, fitness, or other risk factors or to match a computer of a different brand. Check your computer brand for a description of how to adjust conservatism factors. Now, let's look at gradient factors. One mathematical model called Boolman for the developer can be modified with a mechanism called gradient factors. Gradient factors change the model's conservatism, but in two ways. But not all Boolman algorithms are actually identical. Computer manufacturers may modify the math or use a differing assortment of tissue compartments. To make things more complicated, few users or even instructors understand how gradient factors actually work to shift the mathematical model. So let's dive into that. In a nutshell, there are two numbers used to describe a gradient factor. A forward slash separates the numbers. 3070 or 2080 are examples of gradient factors. These factors alter the math in a way that changes the diver's decompression profile. The first number, gradient factor low, is far more controversial than the second, gradient factor high. The first number helps to generate the depth of the first stop, the deepest stop. The second number offers the overall conservatism. 
Both numbers refer to m values, the mathematical expression of the supersaturation limit of a given tissue compartment. You can think of these numbers as percentages. The first number indicates how close to supersaturation you want to be for the controlling, most critical tissue compartment before you generate a decompression stop. If you selected 100, then you would be at the theoretical supersaturation limit. A lower number generates a deeper stop to start your decompression at a lower percentage of the M value of the controlling tissue group. Then the second number, gradient factor high, offers up overall conservatism. If I choose 70 as my second number, then I surface at 70% of the overall M value of the model. 100 here would mean no conservatism, and lower numbers mean increased overall conservatism. Therefore, 100, 100 would seem to be a hazardous profile. My deepest stop happens when I'm at the theoretical edge of bubbling, and I get out of the water still on that razor's edge. But 10-100 might be risky too. It generates a deeper first stop, but still gets the diver out of the water at 100% of the model. 3070 is offered as the default gradient factor on many computers using this strategy. 30% of the M value of the controlling tissue compartment generates the deepest stop and slowly eases upward to surface the diver at 70% of the M value overall. Setting the gradient factor high to less than 100% nets longer, shallower stops to reduce supersaturation in the slower tissues at the end of the dive. The problem with gradient factors is that we still don't completely understand deep stops. Conflicting social media and anecdotal reports over the years has led to much misinformation within the community. Recent research indicates that arbitrary deep stops may even be resulting in an increase in neurological hits. Arbitrary deep stops are not necessarily good things and are not the same as linearly calculated ones based on an algorithm that takes into consideration all personal factors. According to Professor David Doulet, quote, Since about 2005, evidence has been accumulating from comparative decompression trials that shows deep stops are not more efficient and possibly less efficient than shallow stops. That's from his article, Gradient Factors in a Post-Deep Stop World from May 2019. According to his article, Dulet selects a gradient factor of 70-85 for his dives. Gradient factors can be supportive of more conservative diving or can destroy commonly understood mathematical principles that were initially intended to increase safety. We have much to study and learn. How about adaptable algorithms? Algorithms such as Sunto's fused RGBM build in real-time feedback that can shift a decompression model based on actual real-time diving behaviors. Reduced no-stop times, longer deco-stop times, or additional safety stops are generated for an individual user based on their practices, such as multi-day diving, reverse profiles, or rapid ascents, which are known to produce a higher microbubble count. But divers completing simple recreational dives, absent of those mitigating factors, will not be subjected to these modifications in ascent times. A recreational diver that shifts into riskier, deeper, longer, or more frequent dives transitions into a more technical algorithm that reflects the actual diving circumstances. The computing is invisible to the diver, shifting all the stops and intervals appropriately as the dives get more technical over time. Stepped decompression stops made sense when we were using diving tables. But modern algorithms, such as Sunto Fused, 
better represents the slow, gradual release of pressure from a continuous ascent. Sunto's unique feature shows the decompression ceiling and the floor, the deco window as they call it. As long as you're on gassing, an upward arrow is displayed on your computer. When the leading tissues start off gassing, the upward arrow disappears. The best decompression occurs in the zone that falls within the upward and downward arrows. If the ceiling depth is violated, a downward pointing arrow and an audible alarm tell the diver to descend back to the ceiling zone. What about multiple algorithms in computers? Some computers now permit the diver to select the algorithm that they want to use. This feature can be handy if trying to match another computer brand or participate in a team with match profiles. But to this end, I would suggest considering why you would want to match someone else's computer. I mean, we all got into the sport because we wanted to be underwater, right? If a few minutes of additional water time is a problem for your diving buddy, then there might be a bigger problem to address. Furthermore, our diving profiles, gases, behaviors, and personal risk factors rarely align perfectly with another diver. That means our decompression will be a little bit different. Regardless of the strategy or algorithm you choose for calculating your decompression, please remind yourself that it should be a reflection of personal risk assessment. Only you can make a choice that protects you from possible decompression illness in the short term and from potential damage that could occur and be injurious over a lifetime of diving. As you can see, I'm a real advocate for personal responsibility. I'm not worried if my dive partner is a few minutes ahead or a few minutes behind my deco. I'm not worried if they're a few feet or meters above or below me, or if they want to stay down a little bit longer. We just have to have a plan for watching over each other and know how to act if help is needed. I've been bent once, so I'm pretty hard-headed about sticking to a deco strategy that works well for me and represents my own personal risk assessment. That concludes our three-part series, but check online for one more bonus installment to complete this story. It explains my own diving practices and the time I pushed the limits a little too far and took a hit. Join me again. I'd like to thank Sunto for supporting this educational video series.